Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. My name is Giovanni Menendez, and today we're going to review the Thanos oversized hardcover from Donny Cates and Company. This is pretty spectacular. Welcome back guys and today we're going to be taking a look at this beautiful oversized hardcover collecting issues 13 to 18 of the Thanos uh, series. The first annual Cosmic Ghost Rider 1 through 5 and Thanos Legacy number 1. This is written by a ton of people and I'm just going to name them off the back of the book because I there's way too many people involved here. Donny Cates, Jeff Shaw, Dylan Burnett, Antonio Fabella. The list goes on and on and on of the multiple talented people that worked on this book. And if you have no idea what this book is about, do not worry. You do not need to know much beforehand. You just need to know the facts that Thanos is sort of like this cosmic juggernaut of the Marvel uh, history. And this is finally the tale of his long-awaited victory over the universe, if you will. The story first began with 12 issues written by Jeff Lemire, and they were pretty uh, fantastic. I did an, an overview review on the first book. I thought that first volume was a little bit too dramatic for its own good, or something along those lines, whereas this book finds that sweet balance between an action epic and a moving kick-ass story at the same time. Donny Cades exploded into the scene with his uh, Thanos material, but beforehand he had done stuff over at Image, etc, etc. But Thanos was the book that everybody went, huh, Donny Cates, he might be onto something. Now, I, I didn't really care too much about Thanos. Yes, he is one of my favorite cosmic characters, but going into the story, I didn't know I needed this book until I read it. I thought it was just going to be another run-of-the-mill storyline of this character. Uh, but what we get is an introspective look at a character that's more of an instrument of destruction, sort of like a powerful hurricane that forms up and just comes to town to wreck stuff and leaves and you don't know what happened. Usually that's the case with Thanos stories. And with this, uh, you don't really need to read anything else, even though it's issue 13, it's sort of like a standalone story called Thanos Wins, I guess, uh, where the character gets dragged from his current timeline, the present Marvel timeline, into the far future, like, I think it was thousands or millions of years, something like that, into the future, where uh, he meets an older uh, King Thanos. And if you're wondering why that happened, well, the book lets you know. It's a very quick story, but like I said, it's very uh, analytical of the character and what he has gone through. Along the way, you meet the character of the Cosmic Ghost Rider. Now, when that character first showed up, it was sort of like this mystery. Who the heck was the Cosmic Ghost Rider? I tried not uh, spoiling myself with the story, but you know how the internet is, and eventually uh, I read it somewhere by mistake, whatever. But it's a pretty cool reveal. If you have no idea who the character is, once it happens, you're like, huh, that is pretty clever. That makes sense that somewhere along the line, he would get it twisted like that and become this version of the Ghost Rider persona. So without going too much into detail, those six issues uh, that explore sort of what makes Thanos who he is in the future and the present and all of the versions of the character is pretty freaking spectacular. I didn't think I was going to like it, like I said at the beginning, uh, but I ended up really sympathizing over the character and what he has gone through and his quest to satisfy uh, death and, and finally win her approval. But when you find out why the older version of Thanos summons, uh, or, or the current one that we know, it's pretty interesting. It's uh, There are some shocking twists that uh, this cover image might uh, 
give you a hint as to what is happening in the book. Uh, but overall, it's a fun, action-packed, epic uh, storyline about a character that, you know, previously you knew him as a brute. And uh, yeah, there have been stellar writing from uh, uh, Starlin and, and many other writers uh, that have tried to dissect what makes sort of this overlord character so endearing after so many decades in the Marvel Universe. And I do believe Donnie finds a sweet spot of where there is a little bit of compassion, but at the same time, you know that this guy is just a terrible character. Like, terrible in the sense like that he's evil, not that he's a bad character. Uh, but he, he, you know, the things that he's done and he will do, and just the fact that, for example, minor spoilers, he has the Ghost Rider do the penance there so that he can relive all his glorious deeds, which are horrible atrocities if you look at him, uh, just tells you something about the character, plus his fascination with death and, and, and really... Uh, the essence of the character is reduced to something of a necessity. I made the joke about him being a hurricane, but I don't think that's too far off because um, aside from cameos and big storyline events, the character isn't used a ton. Like, he's usually reserved for like a big heavy storyline or a big crossover. You don't see him on every single issue. Now, yeah, that might have changed post uh, the Marvel movies and all that stuff, but it, it tended to be like that, I would like to think. But Kate is able to work the mentality of this character and find a way to uh, show us what it would take for a bad guy to win at, at, and at what cost. Plus, the art by Jeff Shaw is immaculate. I loved it so much. It's very expressive, very freaking badass. Literally, if I take off the uh, dust jacket, is it features one of my uh, favorite images right there seriously that is pretty freaking spectacular and the art in it is just raw and visceral and the fights are brutal and everything looks uh, pretty uh, freaking epic like seriously this is one of my favorite uh, panels from the book and you can see both of them as well as a loving statue tribute to death. It is sort of a minor spoiler, but you will find out eventually why these two guys are fighting each other or why he's fighting himself. But just look at how raw and intense everything is in this book. It It's just turned up to 11. Shaw pulls no punches, man. It looks pretty freaking stunning, in my honest opinion. Plus the colors, even though it's a, uh, it's set in the far future and it's very post-apocalyptic, the colors are very indicative of that, but they are very expressive at the same time. Pretty damn colorful, especially when uh, your your friggin' bad guy is purple, right? Uh, the Cosmic Ghost Rider design is pretty fantastic. I love his art. Uh, I love the art style used for it. And here's what I meant by uh, the action being so uh, <laughs> literally popping. Look at that. That is uh, awesome. Big old boom across the splash page. In my honest opinion. Also, I was a little bit disappointed with the gutter loss because you cannot see Thanos' face. Look at that. That looks terrible. Overall, a fantastic story. Now, you're probably wondering, hey, this book is thicker than just six issues. And you're right. It does contain, um, it does contain uh, the annual which I thought was a complete waste of time. I will be completely honest with you guys. <laughs> I did not care for that annual. Uh, yeah, it kind of maybe moves the story along just a tiny inch or two, but overall it's just a random assortment of Thanos stories, which I guess, you know, you could say like, oh, that's pretty freaking cool. But they're so uneven compared to the main storyline where I thought, oh, man, I, do I really need to know about a chibi Thanos? And let me look this up. I mean, you also had this uh, Fraser Irving story. It's, it gets all um, sci-fi trippy with that wonderful artwork. I'll give you that. That was pretty awesome. There's a young Gamora storyline, which I thought uh, sort of... Uh, you know, it gives you uh, more insight into their relationship. But here, here is uh, Chibi Thanos, which I will be 
completely honest with you guys, even though I like the idea and it's pretty fun and funny at the same time, it has no business being in the middle of the book when you have something like this, which is so uh, raw and visceral in the the way it's drawn and stuff. Yeah, I didn't really like it that much, uh, but it does further the story along for the Cosmic Ghost Rider, which leads into his uh, mini-series. It was five issues, the Cosmic Ghost Rider stuff. Uh, but I liked it. I, I thought it was pretty decent. I like the idea of continuing that character, even though he's supposed to be sort of like this anomaly. Now he's in the main Marvel Universe. People really like the character. He's awesome. Uh, the book delves into the psychology of that twisted persona and what that character has become. And I thought, it, for the most part, it was handled pretty freaking well. It does go into some really weird yet awesome territory with, with a certain baby that I thought uh, was really cool. I actually really enjoyed that. It was a blast uh, almost all the way through. The art in it was really wild and crazy. It reminded me of... Um, of reading something like Invincible, very, very stylized. I, I really enjoyed it. And definitely, I mean, you can sort of see the the influence right there. Uh, it, it sort of does remind me of that. Uh, so that was good. It, it furthered the story along and the character was further developed because, you know, it was such a crazy introduction to the cosmic Ghost Rider. A perfect uh, way to get people accustomed to this new character is to, uh, you know, explore his background a little bit and how he came to be. And just the idea that he made three deals with the devil, if you will, to get to where he is at the current moment, I thought that was extremely fascinating. Really loved that. And then, uh, to cap things off with this book, you get, um, the, what's the name of this? The Thanos Legacy Issue. Which, if, uh, to my understanding, it was part of the renumbering when the Marvel Legacy stuff was happening. Basically, it's a short issue that sets up uh, Thanos' involvement in the current uh, Marvel series that are happening with the cosmic stuff. Plus, it also explains what happened at the end of the Thanos win storyline and, and how that story ended the way it did. The Legacy... Uh, one shot explains all of that and sets up the future to the stuff that's ongoing right now which I have not read so you can read this book by itself you're not gonna be lost you're gonna enjoy it kick-ass action fantastic character designs and arts and all that stuff wonderful pretty freaking badass I'm very happy that I read it uh, before you know Thanos was sort of like this cosmic juggernaut but with this book you learn a little bit more about the character and you learn something uh, new every day and what ticks in his head. And it, it may not be what everybody wants, but it's still a really fantastic look at a character that has been such an important part of the cosmic scene for so many years uh, for uh, Marvel Comics as a whole that I thought, you know, what an explosive way, a dynamic, fun, interesting way for Donny Cates to make his debut, if you will, especially with a run like this. So do I recommend it? Hell freaking yeah, you should read it. You can get the trade. I don't necessarily think you need, well, the legacy issue is kind of important, but the Cosmic Ghost Rider and the annual, uh, they're extras, in my opinion. The main bulk, you can you can get it with the uh, trade paperback, but if you want to go all out and get the uh, deluxe edition, again, the oversized hardcover, I should say, then yeah, go ahead and pick it up. Uh, just fantastic. Antonio Fabella and Dylan Burnett. I forgot to mention these two. Uh, yeah, the art in it is wonderful. Uh, just overall, a great examination of the Mad Titan and, and just what makes him who he is it was awesome i liked it very kick-ass epic and 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 sort of like grandiose in scale uh for a character like this have you read the thanos win storyline tell me what you thought down below if you haven't read it tell me what is your favorite thanos centric storyline in the marvel universe guys as always thank you so much for liking commenting subscribing to we can keep them here on youtube follow me on your favorite social media platform facebook twitter instagram all that fun stuff 
I have got to go. I will catch all of you on our next episode. Thank you.